Now, uh, and they're going to get to listen to a little bit the last half of it, maybe. All right, class. This is Vernon Fant. And Vernon, this is, these are my fourth graders, and they uh, are looking forward to hearing you talk today. I'm not real good at talking. I got too old. But, uh, I'll tell you a few things that you may not know. I thought maybe there might be one or two in here that, uh, that I knew. But don't any of you know me, do you? Any of you? Uh, I've got some fourth graders that go to church with me out here, but I don't see any of them in here. Are you ready for me to go ahead and yes, say what Yes, sir. You may to? start talking when you're ready. All right. I've got a few things here that I want to show you. Uh, now some I'll of this, bring them over here for you. Some of this don't have anything to do with the water, I mean with the jail. That's okay. Any history is what we'd like to hear. All right. I'm going to start off about the first thing that I ever remember. I'm 82 years old. And that's getting old, but uh, I was born in 1927, and in 1932, about uh, as early as I can remember anything, and I don't remember a lot of that, I was about five years old, and uh, I, I didn't show this to Miss Robinson, but uh, you've heard of him, hadn't you? Yes, sir, Herbert, I sure have. Herbert Hoover. He was president uh, when I was born, or the, or the next year after I was born. And, uh, back then, uh, <coughs> the ones that worked in the post office, uh, I, I carried the mail for 30 years and retired back in 1988. But back in 1932, my daddy was trying to get the postmaster job here in Crawford. It's dated uh, November, of, it, it says 1,900 and something down there. 57, uh, 1957. No, 32. 157, oh, okay. Let's see. It's, it's hard all, to read this fancy writing. It's all in writing. But, uh, I couldn't remember what day it was, but it was November the... No, oh, there it is. You had it right, 1932. Okay, and it's November uh, 1932. Herbert Hoover, back then, according to where the president was a Republican or a Democrat, who would get a uh, mail from uh, the post office job, postmaster. And of course, my daddy was Republican then, and as long as he lived, he got... He was in a car wreck in, in uh, 1962. But he got this from Herbert Hoover in November. And uh, in November, they had another election. And of course, uh, Herbert Hoover lost it in front of Roosevelt took over in 33. But uh, uh, after <coughs> my daddy was appointed, uh, he had to wait till uh, to be approved by the Senate mm -hmm. before he got the job. And uh, the Senate knew that uh, Herbert Hoover wasn't going to be president next year, so they held it back until uh, Hoover went out. And they they appointed somebody else that they wanted a Democrat to be. Mm -hmm. That's the way things went all back then. Yeah. And even when I started carrying the mail, uh, if you got a mail route, uh, you had to be one of the top three of the grades and forty something took the mail test for a mail route, and I just happened to be a little sharp that day when we took the test, and you may remember it, uh, John Hyde was in the bunch that took the test, he was a math teacher here at that time, mm -hmm. that was in 1958, and they were 40 something took that test, and uh, I was a Veteran, veteran got five points for being a veteran. And if you're a disabled veteran that got hurt in the Army, you got ten points. And uh, it just so happened that the one 
played the third highest grade with Jimmy Painter, Lil Cole Painter, and uh, they moved him up to first place because he had a disability from uh -huh. the Army and got 10 points. And that put him number one and me number two, young high number three. So Jimmy Painter did most of the job. He wouldn't let nobody else know it, but he had a he had a job down in South Alabama uh, with the hunting commission. He he was a superintendent of some kind down there. And he wasn't married at that time, so he decided that he would just give it up. Wouldn't try to get the job, and he wanted me to have it, so he, he just let him know that uh, to go ahead and appoint me instead of him, so, so that's how I got the mail now, but uh, this, of course, this never did amount to anything, but it's something I've been having. It's very nice, call. even got the president's signature on it, yes, it's got even Herbert signed Hoover. by the president. Herbert Hoover on it, and, uh, Next thing I've got is uh, when I graduated school here, uh, this is made out on the front doorstep. Uh, can you tell which one is me? Right is on the end. Right here? <laughs> That's me right there. And uh, in the fall of 1946, that's when I finished. Uh, in the fall, is a Air Force recruiter. Air Force recruiter come here trying to get some of us senior boys to volunteer and join the Air Force. We was uh, we was deferred just to finish high school. The last year was in high school, and uh, there's five of us volunteered. We wouldn't have to go till after we graduated. Mm -hmm. And the war was over then before we graduated in 45 when we volunteered. We'd come and graduate in 46, May of 46. And that Air Force recruiter was here in November, December of 45. But we had to go ahead and go in even though the war was over. And the rest of the seniors, there's about a dozen more boys in the senior class. They was deferred to school with that, and they didn't volunteer, so they never did have to go to service. But five uh, went on. You probably don't remember any of them, but this a set of twins, J.C. and J.T. Ray, and a uh, uh, woman, Cagle, and uh, I think the others were a little bit. But they was, there's five of us went. And uh, the war was over, but we had to go ahead and go through basic training. And they started letting us out in '47. And when I got out in '47, I decided I, I needed to go to college, and they would pay us a little bit to pay our tuition and our books. We had to pay for a place to stay and all that. And it got too expensive for me. I went to Auburn. And uh, I was going to show you something here about that. I'll get things all mixed up. But, uh, You're welcome to sit down if you'd like. Uh, no, no. So you went to Auburn University? I went to Auburn University, University uh, back then. And I don't know if any of you know that, but back then, when I went to school down there, it wasn't Auburn University. You remember what it was? A.P.I. Alabama Politics Institute. Oh. It was in Auburn, but that was the name of the school. And uh, back then, of course, the one from Auburn and the one from Alabama is always against each other in sports. And this, I've had that hanging in my bedroom for all these years. Y'all y'all have heard of it, I'm sure. But this is the Alabama coat back in the selling his I guess, and oh he was real popular and it's good. Mary Bryant, <coughs> you've heard of Mary Bryant. He was a Alabama a yes, football sir. coach. How many of you in here are Alabama fans know who Paul Bear Bryant is? 
You've heard so of them, I'm day? sure. But you may not remember this, and there wasn't many of us around here that went to Auburn back then. But I decided that's where I wanted to go. And this is Shug and Jordan. Instead of them fighting each other, they've been out hunting together. And, uh, How about that? Even Auburn and Alabama's coaches can get along from time to yeah. time. That's an Auburn. Uh, this was Alabama's coach, Paul Bear Bryant, and this was Auburn's coach, Shug, Shug Jordan. Jordan. Going hunting together. And they're yeah. uh, for orange and uh, blue leg and all mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. So that, that'll take care of that. Uh, that's another picture. And, uh, that's the one from the senior. Y'all already seen those the pictures. Oh, you? yes, sir. They may have designed their own postage stamps for the wall over oh. there. We've got them hanging. All right. Just after I, uh, before I went to Auburn, uh, after I got out of high school, that's, that's me when I joined the Air Force. I'm a little older than that now. You can probably tell by looking at it. <laughs> I enjoyed it down there. I had back then. Uh, out there? You see? Can you see it from back there? This is him when he was in the Air Force. We didn't have any money back then. Uh, didn't have a vehicle. I had to rent a room down there. There had several more older ones from here that was in Auburn then. And I had to walk. We had rooms ready just to sleep in. In a sort of a motel thing, three, four stories. And we had to walk to school and back, sometimes two or three times a day, if that crisis was separated. And uh, it, was, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was a real good place to go. But uh, my money was running out. I decided I better get me a job. And, uh, my brother had a grocery store out here. And he had, back then, we had peddling trucks. Never seen one, I'm sure. But they'd have groceries on the truck. And the last one that I was using was a school bus that the seats had all been taken out of. And a shelf put in there to carry groceries on. So you actually drove one of those peddling trucks? Drove the peddling truck. I was uh, 19 years old in when I started. That was in 47, and I, I drove one up through 51, and really enjoyed it. And, uh, back then, they, the farmers, farming country where we went with them to stop at every house that wanted to buy anything. And I guess the, most of what people would buy would be snuff. <laughs> and tobacco and cigarettes, and of course they had to have the flour and the meal and sugar and all such as that, but I enjoyed that, but I got, got tired of that. So I quit and I went to work at Addis Chalmers. Addis Chalmers had brought out the shells when it got them and started making little tractors and mowing machines and purple and things up. And I worked off and on there, got laid off a whole lot of Worked off and on there till 1958. Uh, I worked at the parts places, they went on the little parts and out there. Uh, uh, off and on while I was working down at Denver. And then the uh, mail route came open and uh, I told me about getting, uh, I wound up in first place. And, Guy that was supposed to get it didn't want it, so I took it in. I stayed with them then for 30 years. Y'all went through the book that told where the mail in, I guess. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, and I've got it to give back to you today. All right. So that you can take it back, please. Okay, thank you. And uh, this right here was, I'd get one of those every year showing me how many years I had. And, uh, and not only did you work that long, they say a safe driver without ever having an accident. Well, let me uh, let me show you what I got. I drove, These are some pins. This is when I 
and drove a million miles. <coughs> wow. A million miles without an accident. 30, 30, nearly 30 years ago. And then, uh, when I got thinking about the pictures, I didn't want to leave my church off. So I got these from the church. This one right here I got first in 50. In 2003, that was my 50th year as a deacon in the First Baptist Church. So you've church. been in Crossville First Baptist Church for 50 years? No, uh, Over 50 yeah, now. That was, that was six years ago. And I got this two years ago. That was the 50th year of the new building that we built in 58. And then uh, 2008, the end it was 50 years old. And when uh, I didn't know this was coming, but when they when they had the celebration for 50 years in that church, there was two of us that uh, had been there ever since we built the church. And, uh, so the church was built in 53? 50, 58. 58. And uh, I had been a, a deacon for <coughs> 50. Uh, you see, that was uh, 50, 50 years there and six more. Than 50. So 56 years, yeah. that's great. So that, that's about all, I, about all I've got to say, unless some of y'all want to ask some questions. Well, me. you want to, if you'd like to sit down and get comfortable, I hate for you to stand the whole oh, time. I, I Looks know. like I've got a couple of people with questions. Okay. May I have your attention, please? Uh, we need to remind everyone that in the morning will be the pie in the face. memory. The first thing you remember when you were younger. Uh, well, I guess uh, I guess the first thing I really remember is I, was, uh, I guess I was probably already in the first grade or second grade. Anyhow, I was always real small, but I was real active and I could, uh, I could me and another guy would have field days down here back then and would run races. And we had a three-legged race. They'd tie, tie two of our legs together and we'd run. Me and him was both real active and small. And we'd just run off and leave them big tall guys. And on the weekend, uh, there's several farmers around that race had big cotton crops. And uh, they'd have the cotton gin and bring the bale and leave it in the front yard. And on the weekends, us uh, young boys would go up there and play. And uh, I know that the teacher has heard this, but I had the nick got the nickname Turnip. That's all. That's all I was knew till I went to the Air Force was this Turnip fan. And my name is Vernon. So uh, most people think that I like Turnip vegetables, and that's where I got my Turnip name. But it wasn't so. so. On the weekends, we'd go up there and play on them bales of cotton. They'd have them laid down in the yard. And I'd run and turn a sort of a flip on my hands and let my feet get up on the bale of cotton. And they got to, they got to hollering at me, go turn up, go turn up. And that's what I was doing. That's where my nickname come from, was turn up, not turn up. <laughs> I didn't. So not the vegetable, what you were doing. No, didn't have nothing to do with it. That's pretty neat. All right, Veronica. Did you receive any allowance? Did your parents give you an allowance when you were growing up? 
No, they didn't have nothing to give. They didn't have, we didn't have a car. Uh, the only thing we'd get for Christmas was my daddy would manage to get a, a sack of oranges and apples. No, no gifts at all. It was just fruit. We were just lucky to get it. Giovanni? Um, what event happened you most compact on your while you while you were growing up? Did any of them personally affect your family? What was the most major event that happened in your life when you were growing up? And how did it affect your family? I imagine that might be the war. Oh, uh, yeah, I know it was. We <coughs> We were uh, in 1941 is when uh, Japan attacked over in Hawaii, rode up Pearl Harbor. It's on Sunday, and we was, had a bunch out in the edge of the pasture over at Oak Hill. That's, that's where I was when I was in the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. We was playing tennis in the edge of the pasture, had a, uh, <coughs> just a dirt floor. And uh, somebody come and told us then. Back then, there wasn't a television nowhere, I mean, in, in this area. And uh, we just had to. And we didn't have electricity a lot of the times when we first moved over there. Had to do the washing outside, put the water in the pot, and build a fire around it, and uh, get it hot. And do it. My mother did the washing out there. And no, no way of wringing it out. Had to hang it out and let it dry. But that, that was about the major thing that uh, bothered me when I was growing up. Joe? How is it sound today different from what it was like when you were a child? What about the town? Is there something that's really different about the town today than when you were younger? Uh, yeah, they a lot of difference in it. Some of these streets wasn't even here. Uh, the street where I first lived, when I was, I was in the first and second grade here at Crawford, is College Street right out here. It goes on over and comes out on 227 over under where the old uh, corn, corn field is. And uh, my daddy, uh, we had a house rented down there when he was trying to get the mail right, I mean the postmaster job. And when that uh, didn't work out, he had a, before we moved over to Crossville from Oak Hill, my daddy had a country store over there. And, and uh, this big old country store up here at uh, where the bank is now, it was uh, a gin for a long time, but before that, uh, old man Creel from over close to Huntsville had bought the store and it was Creel's uh, store and my daddy was working for him until he didn't get the postmaster job and we moved back. He bought a farm over that Oak Hill. And this uh, sort of excites uh, even grown people now. But uh, back then, nobody had money to hardly to buy a farm and pay cash. And my daddy found out that this 60 acre farm was for sale over there. It all killed close to the <coughs> Methodist Church there. The land joins the road that comes up to Methodist Church. And old man uh, Lackey owned it and he had had it rented out. And it was uh, still an old house then, but uh, it was in good shape. And he priced that uh, 60 acres to my daddy for $1,600. Wow. And my daddy said he'd just take it. And of course, he didn't have no money to pay down or nothing. And Mr. Lackey told him, said, if you'll give me a bale of cotton every year for 16 years, it's yours. And all we had to do was shake hands. Didn't have to sign a note or nothing. So that's how we got that farm over there. And I, we moved over there. I was in the second grade then. And we moved back to Oak Hill. And uh, they have a little country school over there with three rooms in it. 
and it went through the sixth grade. But my brother just older than me, uh, he was two years or three years ahead of me. And when when he, uh, they went through the seventh grade then, but he was the only student in the seventh grade the year he finished the seventh grade, and they closed the seventh grade down the next year. So I, I finished the sixth grade there as far as it went then. Then I started back over here, and Miss Brindley was my seventh grade teacher. Then you've heard of her, I'm sure. But she was a good one, but she expected it to be pretty smart. And she asked, uh, we're supposed to have learned who the president and vice president was from the beginning of the United States on up to then, which was, was in about 41, I guess. And this uh, little smart fella, not not real educated smart, he's just a smart editor. Uh, she asked him what the year such and such a president was president, the, his name. And, he tried to think, never did think of it. He said, I just don't know. She said, you know what? Said, I can name every one of the presidents and vice presidents and, and secretaries or something like that. He said, yeah, Miss Friendly, you was a living back then. <laughs> but uh, uh, she, she was good. And this this uh, teacher that's got her picture here with me, the principal is Mr. Treadman, you all have heard of. And the woman is Miss Igo, and she was my senior teacher. So, uh, um, David, what was your favorite thing to do for fun? What'd you do for fun? What were your favorite activities for uh, fun? Marbles. Just yeah. take your marbles to school and shoot them marbles, and, and we'd win some marbles. And that's. That's about it, except I really did want to play basketball. I didn't have enough weight to play football. <clears throat> but I could I could make a goal fairly easy, not good enough to be a good basketball player, but I was just too short. Uh, I don't guess I was uh, very big tall uh, when I was in the, uh, started in railroad school, I mean in high school. I like I like to play marble and uh, we play hide and seek and all things like that. Ashley, oh, you had the same question. Now. Kenneth, um, what are the are there any stories about famous or infamous relatives in your family? Do you have any famous or infamous relatives in your family? Like somebody might be wanted by the police or any famous people. I reckon I ever had any that wanted to believe, and I, I may have too, but uh, I've got it wrote down here that I, I forgot to tell you, but uh, most of my family was interested in sports, and uh, I don't know whether any of you ever uh, tried to play any golf or whether you watch any on television or not, but my sister, as a boy, of course, uh, my sister, this sister's still living, but they was, I had five brothers and five sisters, there's 11 of them. And uh, Rudell Nelson married uh, Vernon, Vernon Nelson, he had the same first name as me. But he, he got out of the army uh, back in, uh, 60s, I guess. I forgot what the name of the war was then, but it, when he got out, he started caddying for a golf player. And he got to play and got to play in some, but they didn't have a lot of money either. But uh, he would caddy for these rich people over the golf course. And they got to watching him hit ball some, and they said, Larry said, why don't you try to be a pro golfer? Larry said, I can't do that. He said, I'm not, a, not that good a golfer, and it takes a lot of money to go try out and go try out until you finally get it. So them men, 
there's four or five of them got together and they come back to them and they said, Larry, we want to buy interest in you. We'll furnish you the money to go and try out until they take you, uh, you to get to be a professional golf. And he said, they said, you can pay us back whatever we, can, we put interest in you. Uh, after you get to make the money playing golf. Well, he said, all right, I'll, I'll try. So it took him about two years, and he started playing golf and went in a lot of money in those golf tournaments. And uh, they come back to him when he got to win enough money to pay them back some, and handed him some papers, said, Larry, said, you don't know what's a penny. And just go on and play golf. And he, oh, I guess $20 million all the time. He's, he's in the senior golf now. And he's on television for years. And what was his last name? Nelson. Larry Nelson. Larry Nelson. And the last three years now, he's got uh, two boys. And the right big caddy for him all these years. And uh, they have a father and son tournament every year in the fall. I think it's next month. In the last three years, him and one of them two sons has won the father and son tournament. Of course, it, it don't pay maybe three or four hundred thousand. But uh, he was in the uh, when he was doing the best. He got a bad arm now. When he was doing the best, he'd make over a million dollars a year. And he never did send me a penny. <laughs> but I'd go see him, and we still go, Stanley, you know Stanley, yes, Stanley. We still go in May of every year. He plays in the tournament of Birmingham. That's the only one we ever get to see him playing in. Uh, we enjoy All right, um, just one or two more. Hannah, what was your other one? Who were your friends when? Who was your best friends growing up? Best friends. Well, I guess it would be those that went with me to the army. Uh, uh, after I, they had the best friends I had in the 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. And uh, uh, some of them, most of them, dead now. We had our class reunion about two months ago in Steve College. And there was about five of us there. Uh, there's two or three that were still living that didn't come, but most of them did. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Veronica? What was your favorite chore? What did you have family chores? What was your least favorite? Did you have any chores that you had to do when you were growing up? Yeah. She's not even old enough to remember this, but instead of mowing grass in the yard, we kept the grass all cut up with a hole and we sweep it with a brush broom. It was dirt. You had to have pretty dirt in each front yard. No grass at all. You had to keep it cut. Why'd they not want grass? It's too hard to make you do anything. Oh, too we Didn't have no mowers. No so you had to dog. keep it dirt. Well, I didn't yeah. know that. That's right. Joe? Oh, holiday celebrating in the town. Uh, what y'all do for the holidays? You mentioned Christmas. Did y'all celebrate any other holidays? Yes, we celebrated them, but I don't remember what we done. I went just uh, Christmas was the biggest holiday yeah, then? Sure was. <coughs> sure was. All right. Thank you for coming. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah. Uh, uh, there's some, one more thing that oh, I okay. haven't told you. Uh, this right here, I just put in on where I wouldn't forget it. 60th anniversary on the water board. So you've been working for the water board for 60 years? No, that was the anniversary of the water board. Oh, the Crossville water they, board's they, been here 60 they started, years. Yeah, they started in the 40s. And this is probably uh, 2000. Like so what people around here do before we had a water board? They had wells that they drilled in the ground and uh, to draw water 
So they, everybody had to have their own well? Had to have their own well. And uh, there's uh, yeah, probably not too many of these live in the city, but that's, uh, we've got about to, maybe six or seven hundred customers now. For some of them, it's just outside the city. We try to get water to everybody we can that needs it. Of course, we've got several water places, Northeast and Charlottesville, uh, and several more. That we get, the water board has to get water from, some water from them, and we've got one well that we get water out. What? That's all I got wrote down here, except I've retired, and, and uh, some of you don't won't know the difference, but I feel like I'm, instead of being retired, I'm <coughs> retarded. You all know what that is? Yeah. My mind is gone. Can't remember my name. And all that kind of stuff. <laughs> what do we say, class? Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, well, uh, uh, you handle this whatever way you want to.